the good. Oh. And Drudge, the 37 off again. And, and the it's the 4 DKR car as well. So the 37 that had already spun when it was in the hands of oh, Lorenzo that's a big Fuchs. Hit. Big collision for who's in the car? Poor Luke Chatin. Remember, he's changed cars this weekend. Been driving the 47 up until this point. 37 for him this weekend. And has he clashed with the DKR engineering car of Belin Garcia in this moment? Because Belin was rejoining. This is where on the track it's at turns five and six at Villeneuve. What's happened here? And it happened way before that, but off goes Paul Luc Chatter into tyres, thankfully, rather than colliding yeah. with bare metal and Armco barrier. Belin Garcia just about got away with that, but what we don't know is what happened before they appeared around the corner at Turn 5. It will be a virtual safety car that's going to be coming in about five seconds' time. And we know what happens with a virtual safety car at the end of that. It automatically goes into a safety car. So the lead that Robert Kubica currently has of 27.9 seconds will evaporate unless they get the car in because the pit lane does not close under a virtual safety it car. It does not. So basically two, th three laps of it under a virtual safety car gives everybody the opportunity to fuel. This will shake things up. Particularly because, yes, you might be able to get your pit stop done, but all of those big gaps will be closed up and we'll have a wave by as well to make sure that none of the subcategories are compromised. This is where you burn your long stop, if you can, and we're about where they need it yep. as well for the yep. LMP3 cars. True enough. So those that haven't yet done that, and all of a sudden you're thinking, well, uh, actually, might is it a benefit not to have done your long well, stop in the early stages? The, the, the problem for some of these teams is they've just done one. Ouch. Yes, yeah, so, in fact, the Wockenspiegel team Monschau car, now driven by Leo Weiss, they've got both of theirs out of the way already, with one more stop still to come, with about an hour to go. We're still waiting for Euro International to even attempt their second stop, though, yet, and they haven't done a... He, they haven't done a one minute and 50 second, but they probably well, they, well, they will no doubt do one now because Matthew Richard Bell enters pit lane as I uttered that sentence. And Robert Kubica is into pit lane as well for a pit stop from the lead of the race, the AO by TF number 14. Well, so a virtual safety car shouldn't present a red light at the end of pit lane at any point, but we will, once the safety car is out, actually lock the pit lane entry road for three laps, the first three laps of a safety car. There's good news. Paul Luc Chatin out of the car, and, well, Looks by on. that token, it, it rather suggests that he's not going to be able to get the car back to pit lane. Not a chance. That the front right of that car is pretty badly bent. This is the end of it. So it does sort of look as if there's been something that's happened before they came into shot, doesn't oh, yeah, it? Yeah. But, it, I mean, we'd be totally guessing and speculating on that. 66 again at 45 degrees, but that's OK because they can correct the line of the car afterwards tight pit lane here and when it gets this busy it does present all sorts of challenges for the teams I just wonder whether it, it, at Le Mans Paul Luc Chatin might have tr tried to drive that car back to the pits but it's maybe a bit too much now with only an hour and 50 minutes to go and clearly the 37 car is going to be losing the lead lap and probably another lap after that as well so Maybe as Paul Luc Chatin walks away, and a, it's a reasonably short walk back to pit road. At least he's on the correct side of the circuit for the pit and paddock. And he seems to be walking reasonably easily as well. But a sorry situation for the 37 car that had taken victory in round one of this year's championship in Barcelona.